today it's important that we make sure that we do the job of battery replacement accurately and that we install that battery so the customer has no problems later on. The new DSS 7000 will actually address the battery install for these complex vehicles by locating the battery in the vehicle, by telling you through an automated process what size, what type, to ensure that you do all the registration and the reset parameters that are necessary in today's vehicles. Gone are the days of a battery simply being under the hood in the right or left hand corner. The DSS 7000 itself will actually locate based on the vehicle where the battery is and show you on the display in the screen not only the battery location but also the OBD2 port as well as where the hood latch is as well. A new technology in the vehicles today are load shedding electrical systems. With that, we need batteries that can charge very, very quickly to regain that energy back in that we take out when we turn off the alternator. Now, by turning off the alternator in these newer vehicles, we get the fuel mileage savings, and we rely then on the battery to power the accessories. Now, it's important that when a vehicle comes with an AGM or an enhanced flooded battery, that we replace it with the exact same type of battery because it's part of the emission systems and part of the performance of the car. The DSS 7000, through an automated VIN scan that we do, actually pulls up the battery specifications. This will help us identify the correct battery for the vehicle and to test it accurately. Many times a low voltage event already occurred at the consumer's home when they tried to start the vehicle before they've gotten to your service bay. So to ensure that all the accessories are going to function correctly after a battery install, the DSS automatically goes through function by function by the make, model, and VIN of the vehicle, and it gives me a checklist of all the things that I need to check. These are reset procedures, and these are manual procedures for each vehicle to ensure that when this vehicle leaves, your consumer is going to be happy, and they're not going to end up at an OEM later on complaining about how their functions don't work and having it related back to a battery install that you just completed. The DSS 7000 is able to test batteries as low as 8 volts, which is much lower than many other units on the market today. You're able to provide a decision on a battery, be it good or bad, at a much lower state of charge. The benefit being, you're able to actually give them a decision right there up front, let them know, nope, we can charge it, get you on your way, or no, it is a bad battery, it requires replacement. Some newer vehicles today require specific reprogramming when you replace the battery. This not only tells the alternator to turn on and off at different times, but it also characterizes the charge current going into the battery. There's a myth out there that you can connect a memory saver and avoid having to do this in vehicles. It's exactly that, a myth. Plug into the OBD2 and register the new battery. It'll reset the charging parameters back to a new battery. Failure to do that will cause premature wear on your current battery that you're installing into the vehicle and will create stresses for the electrical system within the car. The DSS performs this process automatically in the battery replacement application. Today, I'm gonna to take you through the step-by-step -step usage of the DSS 7000, Vidtronic's newest and most advanced battery and full vehicle system test. In this case, we're gonna be running a preventative maintenance test, meaning it will test not only the battery, but also the alternator and the starting system on the vehicle. Step one in the testing is to place the diagnostic unit on the battery. As soon as the unit is plugged into the battery, it actually begins running the test. Red clamp to positive, black clamp to negative. One of the additional features of the DSS 7000 it is running the Midtronic's patented conductance profiling, which is actually giving essentially an ultrasound of the internals of the battery, scanning from plate to plate, one end of the battery to the other, to let you know what the internal state of health is, what the reserve capacity of the battery is. So next step here at this point is to go ahead and enter the VIN number. And there are three different ways to do that on the vehicle. One would be to scan the VIN number. You would tap scan VIN from barcode, You'd go find the barcode itself inside the door frame on the vehicle. It's got the little UPC symbol that we're all familiar with. Snap a quick picture, 
and at that point it's acquired the vehicle identification number. Two would be to connect with what's called the CVG wireless communication device. The CVG device, it's made and designed to be plugged right into the OBD2 port. If those were not be available for whatever reason, you could just simply manually type in the VIN number using the, the keypad on the screen. In this case, it's asking for the location of the battery post. As you can see here, it's a top post, so we simply select top post. It's asking us to confirm the vehicle record. All of the OEM information for a 2005 BMW X3 has been pulled up here on the screen. OEM specification would have been 570 CCA. With the record updated to a 900 CCA battery, we're going to go ahead and continue on the test. At this point, the test is running right now. It's asking us to capture the temperature of the battery with the diagnostic unit placed on top, infrared temperature sensor in the back. At this point, it's going ahead and pulled the temperature of the battery. Test is in progress. And in this case, with the test complete, we see that the cranking state of health is good on our bar gauge there. Along with the conductance profiling, you see a reserve capacity saying that, yep, we are okay on that one. Voltage is fine at 12.47. Measured CCA are above our rated and our temperature for the battery itself. We could either end the test here, provide the customer with the results, or continue on and do a full alternator and starter test as well. So at this point, with the battery test complete, we move on to the system test. The system test is going to allow us to run alternator and starter system checks. Step one, start the vehicle engine. With the CVG module plugged into the OBD port, the DSS 7000 knows the vehicle has been started. It has picked up the alternator signature and it's testing the alternator at idle. It's acquiring a baseline for the alternator in the vehicle to make sure that it's working properly with no load situation. With that portion of the test done, now we're going to test the alternator in a loaded situation. The DSS 7000 asks us to hold the RPM between 2 and 3000. We'll hold the vehicle at that rev signature until the unit lets us know that we're okay to shut down. With the alternator load test complete, the DSS 7000 instructs us to return the engine to idle and go ahead and shut the vehicle off. It asks us to unplug the CVG module from the OBD2 port. Reason being there is this way there's less chance of the, the CVG module accidentally being left in the vehicle when the customer drives away. In fact, the DSS 7000 will not give results until the CVG module has been removed. And then our results are presented. Alternator in this case is healthy in both the no load and the loaded situation, giving voltage signatures for both. The ripple test, as you can see, has passed as well. Ripple test is gonna show the health of the diodes, showing that we have no shorted or open diodes on the alternator. And the starter test as well, showing the normal drop signature from when the, the start event occurs, and then quickly returning back to a normal state of charge. The next step would be to either print the results wirelessly or email them to yourself or to the customer. At this point, the test is done. 